start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play, I will start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello everyone, welcome to Starting With Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today's story is a little bit sadder, and our program today is about some broken promises. Have you ever made a promise to somebody that you couldn't keep? Well, that's what today's program is about. It's about a promise that was broken. <sighs> but, you know what? Before we get to that story, and before we get to the rest of the program, Let's sing some songs. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Spotless are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood? in the blood of the A couple months ago, I went on a mission trip to Mexico. I went with Young Disciple Ministries, which is a ministry that their goal is to involve youth in ministry and missions, and try to help them to have a close relationship with God. There was 23 young people that went on this mission trip with me, and we did some evangelistic seminars in Mexico. We did them at three different churches, we had kids meetings and adult meetings, and I was one of the speakers for the public evangelism. And there were several that I was friends with that were in the children's evangelism. And everything was done by kids, by just us young people. And one thing that happened to me on 
The second to last night was really amazing. I was speaking that night. It was my sixth and last sermon. And I learned that I was not going to be able to use the appeal that was written down. And I was sitting on the pew. There was an appeal song before my appeal. And I was praying and praying, asking God to please give me the words to say, because I had nothing to go off of. I didn't know what to say. I got up onto the stage and I gave one last prayer. And all of a sudden, God began to give me the words to say. And I was able to give the appeal that was needed for the people that night. And that was really amazing for me because I'm just a kid, and God still spoke through me. Jeremiah chapter 1 um, talks about Jeremiah being called into the ministry. And Jeremiah says, Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For you shall go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. So God will speak through us even though we're kids. All we have to say is, here I am, send me. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. God wants to speak through each of us. He can and will speak through each of us, even though we're just kids. We just have to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am. It's time to access this week's Nature Spotlight to see a nature submission that one of you has turned in. Today's picture and video was sent in by Josiah, Hannah, and Elijah. Location, North Carolina. Looks like you guys are at a waterfall, how fun! Waterfalls have an abundance of water and that reminds me of the abundant love that God has for each one of us. Aw, oh, thank you God for saturating us with your love and care, now and forever. I encourage you to get out there and notice God's wonderful nature, the big and the small that God has designed especially for you. So grab a grown-up and go explore. And don't forget to take a picture, record a video, or make a drawing and send it to us at nature at startingwithjesus.com. I can't wait to see it. Hey everyone, do you like to pretend? I do, so let's pretend. You're the parent, and I'm the babysitter watching your kids. You get a phone call. Bring, bring. Hello, Mrs. Jones? Yes, um, I just wanted to call and tell you, hey, my phone is low on battery, so um, if I cut out, like, that's why I didn't hang up on you. But, like, I just wanted to tell you that something is broke. Oh, no. Broken? What would you be thinking as the parent? Oh, no, something is broken in my house. What's happening? There's an emergency. I should get home right away. Today's title for our story is called broken promises and right away I thought oh no what happened right away you think <gasps> let's find out what happened let's pray dear Heavenly Father thank you so much for loving us please be with us and help us to keep our promises that we make to you and to other people we know that you can help us to do that we ask it in your name send your Holy Spirit amen all right broken promises now the people of Israel had heard God's love laws right and they knew that keeping the love laws would bring peace and lasting happiness. They knew this, right? And they knew that he will help you because that's the only way that we can keep God's love laws, right? And they had them in the book of the covenant and they promised, 
they made a promise to God in Exodus 24. Let's hear what that promise was. Exodus 24 verse 7 says, Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. We will do it. Yes, we are on board. All right. Do you think they're going to keep their promise? <laughs> the title was a little bit of a spoiler, wasn't it? Then Moses went up, also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. And they went up to the mountain, right? And God gave them, God gave Moses two tablets of stone. In verse 12, um, Exodus 24, verse 12, the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me into the mountain and be there. And I will give you tablets of stone and the law of the commandments, which I have written that you may teach them. How exciting. He was going to get tablets that had all... You, you've seen the two stones with the commandments written on them. That's what God was going to give Moses. How exciting. But then something happened. He went up and he went to the mountain of God. And he said, wait there with him. And then what happened? He was up there for 40 days and 40 nights talking with God. How amazing would that be to be spending 40 days and 40 nights talking with God? And God was explaining to him about how to keep the love laws and what different rules for the camp should be to make it run smoothly and everything. And it was going so great except for down below at, to the bottom of the mountain. Things were not going so great. Moses had left Aaron in charge which he thought he could trust his brother to keep things going well, but in fact, it did not go well. The people came to Aaron and they said to him, we're in chapter 32 now, come make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses and the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not even know what has become of him. So right then and there, Aaron should have been like, uh, commandment number two, no idols. Commandment number one, um, Keep God first in your life. Know their God's before me. And yet Aaron was not brave. He did not stand up to the people. He was the chronic people pleaser. And so he said, all right, bring in some gold. We'll make, we'll make an idol. We'll make a God. So the people did. They brought in their, all their gold that they had. And he received the gold from their hand. And he fashioned it with an engraving tool into a molded calf. And they said, this is, and then he said, this, this, I, well, I can't even imagine this happening, but it did. This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Can you imagine Aaron saying this after he's seen the God in heaven work miracles on the behalf of his people? Mind boggling. So then Aaron built this altar and he said, tomorrow's the feast of the Lord. Now, I don't know if he meant like the Lord, the true God or the, the Lord, the new golden calf have mercy. And so they rose the next morning, they were having burnt offerings, they were dancing around, they were singing to this golden calf. What is happening? This was so crazy. And, and Moses came down from the mountain and they heard the sound and, and they thought, well, is there a war happening? And he's like, no, they're like singing. It doesn't sound really like a war, but it's so noisy. And God had told Moses what was happening down in the camp. And God has said, I've had it with these people. Like, let's just restart, restart. And Moses, your family can be the chosen family. And I'll just get rid of the Israelites because they are not following me. Now, do you think that God really was going to get rid of his lo loving children, his children, lovely children who are not acting so lovely right now? No, he was testing Moses, wasn't he? And Moses passed the test. He said, no, God, no, don't give up on your people. He was being a true leader, wasn't he? And he was trusting God's promise. And so he had the tablets of this testimony with him. He went down the mountain. And when Moses saw what was happening, he was so upset, so angry. He took the tablets of stone and he threw them down on the ground and they broke into a million pieces. Just like they had just promised that they all that you have said that we will do, we will be obedient. And yet they had broken all of that. And he broke it. You know what he did with the calf? He burned it or melted it down. And this is the gross part. He put, he made it into a powder and he sprinkled it into the water and the people had to drink that water. Ugh. Ugh. And then the people had to choose. He said, you know, the people who want to follow God, come with me. And they did. The people who wanted to follow God. In fact, it was really cool because the Levites showed really a good leadership in this. And they, the majority of the Levites all went and chose to be on God's side. And, um, 
there was some consequences for the rest of the people. It was so sad, this choice that they had made. But in the sadness shines through something that is so very, very important. Because no matter what God's people did, no matter how many times they broke their promises, God will always forgive us. He will always give us a second try if we just simply ask him. How amazing. This was like blatant. It didn't even seem like they were trying. Like maybe they were trying for 40 days. They were trying to keep the promise, trying to keep the promise. And yet then they finally just couldn't keep the promise any longer. God gave them another try. Isn't that amazing? We serve an awesome God. I don't know if I could have forgiven them. Like when you blatantly disregard God's message and his love loss. Hmm. Well, after that, God spent another 40 days and nights with Moses up on the Mount Sinai. Oh, another 40 days and nights. He had a lot to share with him, didn't he? And I want to put a plug in here for our podcast because I didn't get time to cover all of today's lesson and all the story today. So I want you to check it out. Seed Pod for Kids at startingwithjesus.com. We also have Seed Pod for Beginners and we have El Seed Pod para los Niños for all of our friends who speak Spanish or maybe learning Spanish. So please check those out. And until next time, start with Jesus by exploring his word. Welcome to craft time. Today we are going to make a paper chain. Let me show you. In our lesson, we learned how God's people promised that they would keep all of God's laws because they loved him and then they broke it. So we're going to have this chain to remind us that we want to stay connected to Jesus by keeping his law, but only he can help us. So choose your paper. You can choose whatever color, red, blue, green, and then you're going to get some scissors. Don't forget to have your parents help you if you need that to cut 10 strips of paper. You can go this way or this way. I've already cut my pieces out, so they're about, they're about this big. Then you're going to make your first part of the chain. Get a glue stick or tape. You're going to put a little bit of glue on one side and then fold it over so that that glue will overlap on the other piece. That's going to give you your very first circle. Then you take your next one, tuck it through the chain, and then do the same thing. Put some glue on it on just one side and then close it. Same thing again. And then you're going to keep on going until, I've already made some more, so I'm going to connect these two together, until you have all 10 pieces connected. If you loop it through each time, you're going to have 10 pieces. Now for the cross. You're going to get one more strip of paper, and you're going to cut it not in the middle, but more like up here, about a third of the way. Cut it across. You're going to put some glue right in the middle of the short piece, right here, and then stick it on so it looks like a cross. That'll remind us that Jesus gave us the commandments. And then you'll take this last part in the bottom, and you're going to find the bottom of, or the top, the top of your chain, and you're going to glue it to that. I think I'll use tape. Gonna tape it on. There we go. Bend it back. And then if you use another piece of tape on the cross, you can put it up on your wall and let it be a reminder of God's wonderful commandments, his promises to us. Hope you enjoyed our craft today. Bye. Thank you for that craft time, Miss Ashley, and for the Bible story, Miss Michelle. It's time for our new questions after we review our old questions. So let's see what the questions from last week were, see if we got them right, and then after that, we're gonna see what our new questions are. Are you ready? Shout out to Ashley, Kinsley, Kalia, Benny, Corey, Gabriella, Julia, Arthur, Ellie, Keeney, Denny, Paul, Kevin, Nyabwe, Ruby, Arabella, Owen, Isaiah, Elnathan, Kara, Daniela, Andrea, Sandra, Skylar, Eno, Christian, Chudier, Nia Kong, Mia, Puok, Judah, Eben, Nisi, and Dom. Great job answering your questions.
It's time for our new questions. And it's time to see if you were listening during the Bible story. And if you think you know the answers, then write them down on a piece of paper and or type them up and send them to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com. Are you ready? Okay. Question number one. What does keeping God's law give you? What does keeping God's law give you? Question number two. True or false? You can keep God's law if you try really, really hard. You can keep God's law if you try really, really hard. True or false? Question number three. Even when we break promises, God will always what? So it's kind of a fill in the blank question. When we break our promises and we ask for forgiveness, what will God do? When we break our promises and we ask God to forgive us, what will he do? You can send your answers to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com. Exodus 20 verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Bye, happy Sabbath. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. Bye, happy Sabbath. Friends. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 23. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall not have any other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall not have any other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. Bye! Happy Sabbath! Have a good day! You shall not have any other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. Bye! Happy Sabbath! You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Bye, friends. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. Shabbat Shalom from Jerusalem. Thou, Thou shalt have, have no other gods, gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. Bye, Bye happy Sabbath. You shall have no other gods before me. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall have no other gods before me. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. Bye, happy Sabbath. No other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. Happy Sabbath. Goodbye. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 23. Happy Sabbath, friends. Exodus 20 verse 3. You shall know you shall have no other gods before me. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall have no other gods before me. Sabbath bye. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Bye, happy Sabbath. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Happy Sabbath, friends. The children of Israel had forgotten all that God had done for them. 
they built a golden calf and worshipped it. <gasps> I wouldn't worship an idol. Most of us, yeah, most of us would say that, right? Most of us would say, that's so silly to bow down to a calf, a golden calf. It can't hear you. It doesn't understand what you're saying. Well, I have a concentrate here. A concentrate is when you boil something and so all the liquid comes off. I boiled some vinegar and baking soda and I boiled it for about an hour so a lot of liquid came off. Now concentrate, we also use that word to say when we're concentrating on something. We're thinking really hard about something and everything else is kind of put to the side. Just like the water boils off, everything else is kind of off to the side because we're concentrating and focusing on something. Well, sometimes in our lives, we can concentrate on things and push God to the side because we're so busy focusing on one thing. Watch what happens as I put this concentrate right here. I have some starter crystals I scraped off the side of my pan and I'm gonna put some of this concentrate right on top of those. Sometimes we start watching our favorite show first thing in the morning instead of starting with Jesus. Sometimes we don't want to share our toys. We want the very best for ourselves. Sometimes we see what other people have and we decide we need something that's bigger and better and nicer for ourselves. Sometimes we start to idolize sports heroes singers or actors more than we think about God. Sometimes how we look, our clothes or our hair, become more important than building our character after Christ's. All of a sudden, these things we've been concentrating on are becoming something. These things are becoming an idol. It took some time, but after all that concentrating on something that was very important to us, we built an idol. Oh, anything that we focus on more than we focus on God can become an idol. And we don't want idols in our lives, do we? Silly as a golden calf sounds, we can have idols in our lives too. Now, let's bust our idol. Will you take this hammer and break our idol down? <laughs> that idol is no longer what we're concentrating on. Instead, we're going to concentrate on God. Hey kids, have you heard of our daily devotional podcast called The Seed Pod for Kids? Take a look behind the scenes and meet our team. I start by studying the lessons and looking for key words or stories that I can include. In this lesson, I'm gonna include a story about a snake. Then I go into my closet, set up my equipment and start recording the episode. Meet Alex, our team volunteer, who takes Bible verses kids have recorded, deletes mistakes or the parents coaching. Man is our match own image. The man in his own image. And then he sends the verses to Dylan. This is Dylan, our teen audio engineer, who takes out all of my mistakes. Does the Bible say that the, that, what else does the Bible say that God made on? Puts all the different elements together and uploads it for you to enjoy. You can listen to all our episodes for free on the major podcast platforms or go to our website, startingwithjesus.com slash seedpod. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you were here. Now, don't forget that you can go back and watch our VBS program because we had a really fun week. We did lots of things and there was just a whole bunch of fun putting this program together and sharing it with you guys. And we had a lot of fun in the program, didn't we? So make sure to go back and watch the whole program at startingwithjesus.com slash go. And you won't want to miss a single moment of it. It was super fun.
Now, I would challenge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel because sometimes we put videos there that you'll be able to see that aren't part of our regular Sabbath school program. So make sure to go check out our YouTube. And also we have Facebook and Instagram and we have our Facebook is Starting With Jesus. We also have our Facebook account in, in Spanish, which is Starting With Jesus Espanol. And also our Instagram, which is Starting With Jesus and our Spanish version, which is Starting With Jesus under dash ES. So make sure to check out all our social medias, subscribe, follow, and like, so that you can stay up to date with what's happening at Starting With Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for everything you do. Help us to be like you and keep us in your care. Help us to seek forgiveness when we've broken our promises and help us to always strive with your help to keep our promises to you. We love you, Jesus, and thank you that you're so forgiving and so loving back to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch.